Hello again everyone and welcome back to Reddit Aliens. I am John and as always, thank you so much for being here. Solid topic for you today. Let's do it. What mistake can end lives? Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Leaving the stranded vehicle on the road in winter and trying to walk to get help. It happens in rural parts of our province once or twice a year and they find the body a few days later. They get disoriented and freeze. Oily paint staining rags will combust, per the internets. Spontaneous combustion of oily rags occurs when rag or cloth is slowly heated to its ignition point through oxidation. A substance will begin to release heat as it oxidizes. If this heat has no way to escape, like in a pile, the temperature will rise to a level high enough to ignite the oil and ignite the rag or cloth. My dad worked in construction and this had happened on a job site a time or two. A friend's husband locked himself out of their home. He tried to get in through a window that had security bars. While squeezing through, his foot slipped and he essentially hung himself on the windowsill. There's a super famous example which got made into a film eventually, I think called Open Water. But the original story was a yacht was found sailing adrift with a baby aboard and no crew anywhere to be seen. No signs of panic were found. The baby was dehydrated, but otherwise fine. Eventually, it was assumed that whilst at sea, they went for a swim. The sides of yacht stick out of the water high enough in place, but on most boats, the stern is lowered, so you can climb into and out of the yacht from a tender, small dinghy. This yacht was different and had a ladder lowered from the back. This was either up or missing, but they couldn't get back on the boat and eventually drowned or were attacked by predators. Now I never jump in without thinking about this, because you can't ever guarantee the person behind you won't do the same. Imagine trying everything to get back to your screaming baby, mere feet away, and just being out of reach. It'd get dark. The wind might pick up and carry the boat away. Those final moments would be agony from such a simple mistake. Long, long ago, I was on the crew of a submarine older than me. We went into the shipyard. One of the planned jobs was to install some new equipment that required a hull penetration. One Friday afternoon, a shipyard worker drilled a 1 8 inch pilot hole through the hull, intending to come back on Monday to finish the job. The job got cancelled, he got reassigned, and the hole remained. It was covered with duct tape to keep dirt out. The painters went ahead and sprayed over the tape. How deep can a piece of duct tape plus paint hold on a dive? About 218 feet. Before you ask, yes, we survived. Well, this sounds like another great example of the oxymoron military intelligence. <laughs> Glad you're all right. Near me, there was a serious traffic collision. Several cars and two trucks. Three people died when one truck plowed into stationary traffic at around 50 miles per hour. The crash and resulting fire were so horrific Two people were only identified by their dead dog in the carriageway. It was microchipped. It was on the BBC News, then have been documentaries about it. The truck driver was on his phone. He was charged and is now in prison. I worked at a tire place for summer, and the first thing they told me was, see that torque wrench? One mistake with this, and you can kill a whole family in a matter of seconds. I thought, well, better take this thing seriously. Not being honest with doctors about Viagra, it has many dangerous drug interactions and can cause a lot of problems from what I've heard. Trust me, the doctor ain't gonna judge you guys. They have seen much more embarrassing things, and it would suck to die because you wanted to hide something just for it to be later stated in your death certificate. The Halifax Explosion, December 1917. A ship with a hell of a lot of explosives ran into another ship that was traveling on the wrong side of the shipping lanes. An explosion, the equivalent of three KTs of TNT, killed nearly 2,000 people, caused a tsunami, and injured 9,000 people. Keeping in mind, the recent Beirut explosion was close to one KT of dynamite. I read an article a long time ago about an aircraft maintenance worker not removing a piece of tape that was put in place to protect a sensor during cleaning. The pilot failed to notice during the pre-flight inspection. More than a hundred people died in the plane crash. The Guainia accident. 
A court in Brazil had been made aware that there was an unsecured source of radiation in a condemned cancer treatment clinic due to be torn down, but did not let anyone safely remove it. A scrap collector went into the building, found the radiation source, broke it open, and found glowing blue powder inside. No one knew it was extremely radioactive cesium powder, and the glowing blue light emitted by the powder was beautiful. It was spread around much of the local city before reports of widespread radiation sickness prompted government emergency action. Multiple people died of radiation poisoning, including one six-year-old girl. As an additional butthole clencher, the fire department very nearly threw the bag holding the remaining powder into the local river. When I was a kid, there was a family down the street with three small children. The parents had a fairly ugly breakup and the mom ran off with her new boyfriend. Every single time she dropped the kids off at his house for visitation, the drop-off devolved into a screaming match in their front yard. One day, she shows up to drop off the kids with her boyfriend. Boyfriend and dad get into a shouting match and the boyfriend punched the dad, laying him out on the front lawn. The boyfriend and mom then jumped in their car and took off. A moment later, the dad came too hopped in his pickup truck, and floored it out of his driveway in pursuit. Not sure what he was planning to do, but he wasn't going to let them get away. He didn't realize that his three children were standing by, oh my God, behind the pickup when he threw it into reverse and floored it. All three were killed, and the witnesses said it was incredibly gory because two of them were sucked under the spinning truck tires. He spent a decade in prison and lost everything he had. Worst part is, all of the stories that came out said that he'd been a great dad and wasn't at fault in the breakup. Mom had got herself hooked on drugs while trying to lose weight, and the boyfriend was her new dealer. He was a good guy who got stuck in a shitty situation and then made one horrific mistake. Some homeopathic medicine for babies still contained deadly amounts of belladonna. Some babies died. Apparently, they did not dilute it as extremely as they were supposed to in homeopathy. Baby in the back seat. I'm in childcare, and I'll do some insane things to remember there's a baby back there. Take my shoes off, put the, my phone back there, dirty diaper as a reminder. People forget. It doesn't matter if you're mom, nanny, father, nurse, firefighter. It happens. And yet, there's always someone who says, I'd never forget my baby. And every year, babies die because of it. You know, you're absolutely right. And this is a good reminder. We can be careful and vigilant and obviously not important, but life happens. And unfortunately, this thing happens at least a couple times a year. Totally tragic. Back when I was in middle school, we had carbon monoxide leaks on a state testing day. Someone was supposed to test for carbon monoxide over the weekend, but the guy showed up at the high school and not the middle school, and they ended up having to reschedule the whole thing. When they found out about the leak, everyone was in the middle of the state testing and they didn't want to evacuate the classrooms, plus it was raining. So they held a shelter in place and tried to handle the situation since it was a room away from the classrooms. But then kids started passing out in the classrooms and vomiting and stuff. Several ambulances, two hours in the rain, and several school buses taking us all to stay in the elementary school building later, three students and one teacher's assistant died and over 30 students ended up in the hospital. My mom came and got me from the elementary school and took me to the hospital. I was okay, but I went home and passed out for almost two days. My mom was about ready to drag me back, but then I started to feel better. All around, effing crazy experience. Mao's idea to get rid of sparrows, classic. In short, China's great leader Mao had calculated that sparrows eat grain, and if China got rid of them, they would have more food. So they did indeed decimate the sparrow population. They did not consider that sparrows eat a lot of insects as well, which started to thrive, including locusts. The locusts ate the grain, famine, between 16 and 30 million people died. When he recognized his mistake, he asked the Soviet Union for help, and they secretly shipped sparrows to China. This is a bit of a stretch though. Lots of factors led to famine, lots of mistakes were made, but all of them this was probably the most obviously stupid one. Very likely the guy that accidentally opened the clamp of the diving bell that was in the process of decompression on the Biford Dolphin oil rig in 83. Oof. The sudden change in pressure caused such an explosion that five people died, all four divers and one assistant. 
and one was badly injured. One of the divers was sucked through a small diameter hole and basically was ripped in half and exploded. They found remains as high as 10 meters on the oil platform. I was working alone and fell off a ladder beside an empty shaft where stairs used to be. I fell 20 feet off the ladder down the shaft. I caught myself on a railing that had been left behind and hit the floor below. I got off really lucky. I was bruised up and it took about 20 minutes till I could get up. If that railing wasn't there, I was probably dead because I would have fallen two more floors to the basement. Also, saw a guy who fell off a ladder. He was three steps up, smashed his head, and got perma brain damage. Friend was having a beer in a tavern. Some guys came in and started messing with my friend. He moved seats twice and then got up to leave when one of the guys threw a punch. My friend threw one punch back and the guy he hit landed in the ICU and wasn't expected to live. Friend was just sitting in jail waiting, for, just waiting for the guy he punched to either die or recovered. Turns out the guy he punched recovered. Friend took a reduced charge of aggravated assault, a felony, one punch. I once listened to a guy telling the story of how, when he fell down the stairs, he desperately clutched onto the glass of wine he was carrying in order to not to break it, instead of grabbing the railing to stop his fall. He survived with a broken hip, but I imagine lots of people probably have the same weird instinct and some may not be able to tell the tale. Nigerian Airlines Flight 2120, operated by Nation Air, departed Jeddah, Saudi Arabia after a maintenance worker reinflated a tire with air instead of nitrogen. The tire heated up, burst, and caught fire during the takeoff roll. The landing gear was retracted into the aircraft and burned the aircraft from the inside out. The fire caused a mid-air structural failure shortly before the pilots could return to Jeddah. My father's first wife was a flight attendant on that flight. Her and 260 others died. It remains the most deadly aviation accident involving a Canadian airline. A neighborhood kid I grew up with got his Honda all tricked out. He had an aftermarket remote start on it back when those were rather new. Apparently the remote start activated while everyone was asleep. I guess the theory was he left his keys in his pants when he fell asleep. Car was in the garage. Entire household, parents, brother, sister, and Isaac all died. Grenfell Tower Kensington and Chelsea Borough Council saved £5,000, $6,000 by not installing the slightly more expensive fireproof cladding and instead used Radobond PE, which, as described by one report, acted like solid petrol in the fire. This caused 72 deaths and hundreds to suffer from homelessness, mental health problems, and trauma. Dennis Rader, the BTK serial killer. He avoided arrest for 30 years, then, in an apparent need for attention, began writing to the police, basically mocking them for never having caught him. He asked the cops if they would be able to trace a floppy disk if he sent one to them. They said no. He sent it. They traced it. They arrested him, and he's in prison for life. Pranking your friend by putting a revolver to your head with a bullet in it and forgetting which way the cylinder rotates. That happened to a kid I went to school with. He put a bullet in the cylinder, then had his friend come up the stairs to prank them by thinking they were going to shoot themselves. Pulled the trigger, bang, off went Tanner's brains and skull onto the walls. His friend never recovered from this and led to all sorts of problems. I think about this from time to time for some reason. Dude was a nice guy, as was his friend. Don't point a gun at anything you don't want to destroy, even if you know or think it isn't loaded. Yeah. Terrible. Tragic, foolish, just unnecessary. Respect weapon. Wouldn't call it simple, but the decision to say something so stupid must have been. 2012, Arizona. The NFL is preparing for the Super Bowl, hosted in Glendale at the huge outrageous stadium we built for a consistently losing team. That's sad in itself, by the way. Head project manager for the NFL is this woman, who should be justifiably imprisoned. She needs to meet a deadline, but due to horrible organizational practices, has not set up the proper safety procedures. Carpenter, blue-collar guy, kids, wife, the whole shebang, tells this lady the 150-foot climb is not safe, no fall protection. She yells at him, his supervisor, and their company head. Get your ass on that ladder or you're all out of here. 
Well, most of us would have left, but you threaten the income of everyone working for that company. Kai says, F it, then I'll make the climb. I can't leave my brothers jobless. Falls to his death at 100 feet. The NFL protected this bitch, and she was never charged with manslaughter, which is the common consequence for such a dereliction of duty. F the NFL. F that lady. I would gladly slap her across the face as hard as I could. What's her name?